I recently bought an 85 inch TV for my in-laws and in this video I wanted to just tell you um, how to choose the best 85 inch TV that's kind of mid-range, not your complete budget, but also not super high-end. What are some different things to consider to get the best TV? State the nature of your medical emergency. I think this will be particularly useful if you are a casual buyer who doesn't care too much about all these fine little details that majority of people won't notice because I am also a casual buyer just like you, which means that the things that I'm looking for are probably um, similar to what you're looking at. So uh, the first thing I want to talk about is getting the size right. I mean, if you're looking for an 85 inch TV, you should stick with an 85 inch TV. I feel like you'll go into some forums and read some things saying, oh, maybe you should get the 77 inch one, 75 inch one, but size is probably the most important thing to you. So don't get swayed otherwise. Size is really the, a very impressive thing and it makes a huge difference. And so yeah, maybe you'll get a slightly lower quality TV for the price, um, but having that size is pretty essential. The next thing I learned was about the different panels and you should know about the three different panels that you can potentially get for your TV. The first one is an IPS panel, the next one's a VA panel, and then finally you have OLEDs. So the IPS panel is probably the cheapest one of them all. Uh, the advantages of it is that it has a wide viewing angle, so it's really good for sports situations or in a main hallway or living room where you're expecting to have multiple people off to the sides. The image quality just doesn't degrade as much when viewed from an angle. The problem with the IPS panels, however, is that their contrast ratio is really poor. What this means is if you're watching a movie and the room is all dark, you're not going to get a true deep black, which I think is actually really important for having a nice cinematic experience. Instead, you're going to get this kind of washed out gray uh, appearance of the TV instead of when it should be black. The next panel that you have to consider after that, which is I think the panel that a majority of people is going to want for a TV of this size, uh, and that's a VA panel. The advantages of a VA panel is that it really has much better contrast ratios and what you're looking for when you're looking on the review websites is a contrast ratio of greater than 3000. The downside of a VA panel obviously is that uh, it doesn't have that nice wide viewing angle um, that the IPS does, but I think for the majority of people you're going to be pretty much watching in the same like 30 degree field of vision. Uh, nobody's going to be really be sitting off super far to the side, so I think that main advantage of the IPS really isn't a big factor for most people. So that's why a VA panel is preferred. The last panel is OLED, which I'm sure you've heard about, and this is the best uh, panel for looking at uh, cinematic movie experience. Uh, it's the most expensive panel, and it can tr produce true blacks, which means it can basically completely turn off a light and then have it be completely black. The big problem with uh, OLEDs besides cost is that they function poorly in bright environments and so a lot of times if you're watching the TV during the daytime and you're in a brightly lit room, uh, it's going to be kind of hard to see the TV. Next you want to take a look at the contrast ratio. I mentioned this earlier but you want to look for a contrast ratio of greater than 3000 to 1 and you also uh, you, you know, look at if it has local dimming which is a big plus because that basically enhances the amount of contrast you can get between a bright thing and a dark thing. Having that local dim dimming is definitely a nice feature to have. My next recommendation after you found the mid-range TV with a VA panel and a good contrast ratio and local dimming is to look up the TV on rtings.com. This is an amazing review website that really gives goes through all the different specifications of the TV. It gives it certain ratings for how it's going to function as a gaming thing, as a movie thing, as a, as a sports TV. And I think that in general you should really try and pick a TV that's kind of green in all, all categories. There's almost too much information here. It's a little bit of information overload, but a lot of the things are, are really minor like motion smoothing and all these little other gimmicks that TVs have. I would try and ignore those things. They, they really don't matter for the majority, the vast 95% of the population. So just look at the overall score, look at the contrast ratio, look at what panel it is, and just kind of get an overall sense of uh, if this is a good TV or not by going on RTings and looking at that those main features. Okay, and the last step is to finally pick your TV. Obviously you want to look for if there's any good deals going around, um, but I'm going to give you some recommendations of a good TV to buy in 2021 or 2022 that's 85 inch. So the best one and the one that I got I think is the Sony X91J. Uh, it's a really great VA panel with great blacks. It's also got a good smart interface. Um, it just has a really good system overall and a very good image quality. And all of these are around $2,000 to $3,000. So quite expensive, but if you find them on sale, uh, it can be quite good. The other recommendation I would have that's a slightly a little bit cheaper but doesn't tend to go on sale as much is the TCL R745, uh, which is another very, very well-regarded 85-inch uh, TV in this price range. If it's available, I'd also go for a Sony X900H, 
launch, which is basically the 2019 or 2020 model of the X91J. For all intents and purposes, it's the same as the X91J, but uh, cheaper. It just wasn't available when I was looking for it. I would recommend against uh, LG panels uh, in this price range because they tend to be IPS panels. And then I would also, you know, the Samsung ones, once you get up to like a little bit higher in the price range, they can be pretty good. I think the Q80 is uh, a pretty well-regarded one. Sorry, the Q85, not the Q80. Um, I was looking at the Q70A and the Q80A, and they just didn't have great contrast ratios. And just overall in their artings compared to the Sony's were just across the board rated worse than the Sony TV was. My last tip is that when you go to Best Buy, um, don't be swayed by them because I actually went to Best Buy, I was super excited and I thought they would be giving me really good advice because I've had some good experiences at Best Buy before. They kind of felt like my people knew what kind of things I was looking out for. Um, but for some reason when I got there, they were very, very pushy about trying to push a Samsung TV on me at all costs and every single piece of objective information that I had on the internet from our tanks, from all these forums and everything was that the Sony X91J it was by far superior compared to those Samsung's and they they told me you know oh we have our local Samsung expert here and we th really think Samsung's the best blah 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 and they were really pushing super super hard and then even when I pressed them a little bit more the guy admitted that he had Sony's in his house for large TVs. So I was kind of confused about why they were trying to push the Samsung so much. I don't know if they get some kind of commission. I suspect probably they do. Uh, but really just stick to your guns, stick to the research that you've done. You've picked out a good panel with good contrast ratio. You've looked on R-Tanks to find the best value and best price, to find the best quality TV for your needs. So just go in with co that confidence and then get your nice 85 inch TV and really enjoy it. It's, it's definitely a big change. We upgraded from a 58 inch to an 85 inch and it really does make a completely different cinematic experience. Uh, I definitely think size is a huge factor. It's the number one thing that most people are gonna notice. 99% of people are not gonna notice the small differences in contrast ratios or motion smoothing or anything like that. So pick a good TV that's got some good deep blacks that are like at least reasonable um, and has a good value. And then that's how you're gonna get your 85 inch TV. I hope this was helpful. Let me know in the comments if you have any suggestions for buying a large TV of this size, if you agree with my evaluation and the things that I was looking at when I was choosing a TV. And I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys think. Thanks for watching.